So now we're getting into the heart of this simplified version of ordinal collapsing functions by actually getting into some meaningful, some pretty significant oh, big omega arithmetic. We finally started using exponentiation. Psi applied to that gives us a really big ordinal. And then G gives us a pretty impressive number. And remember, we're just thinking of that as the, sh the weak shadow of F applied to that ordinal comma N which would be the super, super, super huge finite number that this series is all about. Okay, so omega cubed, we're getting n five up arrows, n plus one. You can see the pattern. I'm not gonna worry too much in this one about any kind of careful argument, um, but show you, the, show you the patterns. If you have any finite number, we're gonna get n and then k plus two up arrows of n plus one. So this is a pretty big step that we're we're putting now uh, a new variable into the number of up arrows slot and that's going to be very significant so in other words let's let's take it to our first limit ordinal big omega to the little omega that's easy because once we have this for k it's just by definition you just do that where you put n in this slot and n in this slot okay so approximately that's n f uh, n plus two up arrows of n plus one so, and then if you compare that, I'm going to use from now on, I'm going to switch to the fast growing hierarchy notation. That is roughly the n plus 3 f function applied to n plus 1. And given that this is the more sensitive slot, I'm just going to pretend they're both n plus 3. And I'm going to note that that's f omega of n plus 3. So that is a big deal that um, the g, the, the pokey, slow-growing G functions that take pretty enormous ordinals and really tame them and get a very pedestrian, um, usually unimpressive version of, of a, gro a growth factor, a growth rate, is now growing at the F omega level. Okay, That's just stunning um, if you think about what that would mean for putting an F right here. Okay, in terms of the Veblen race, just a brief mention, and I'll let um, people comment about if they want to see more about that. Um, it turns out we're up to the phi little omega of zero level. Um, that does not at all exhaust the Veblen idea, even though we're putting an infinite ordinal into the, this, the subscript slot, the most sensitive slot of this version of Veblen. Uh, we could start recycling Veblen ordinals into that slot, and that gives us more powerful stuff. We'll see that in just a minute, though. Okay. Um, notice that we should have no worries about this psi notation not keeping pace with Veblen or really exceeding it pretty soon because we've barely started to do serious arithmetic with big omega. Yes, we've done exponentiation, but we haven't done iterated exponentiation, and that's where it gets really powerful. Okay. Um, so let's see what happens with that. Okay. If um, if we look at what we've got here, we've got f of psi to the k, or psi of omega to the k, we see the pattern for that. We put in the pattern for little omega. It's not too hard to believe that for any countable alpha, what you do is you look at the g value for that. We've seen this before, that if you know what happens for a, a finite alpha, a good guess is that what happens for an arbitrary countable alpha is you just replace it with its g value. So this is one of the last times I'm going to talk about it in terms of, of up arrows. Um, but what we've really got is you're taking the f omega function, basically, and with plus or minus ones pretty much ignored, um, you're putting g alpha of n into that f omega slot. And why would we be so interested in what happens there for ca arbitrary countable alpha? It's because that gets us immediately to the big omega to the big omega level. And this is how this stuff works, is that once you get to this stage of having some sort of arithmetic with, with big omega and one open slot, and you're pretty sure you know what happens for an arbitrary countable alpha, and you can express that in this form, g of this stuff with an open slot alpha is some known function of what the g, function, the g value of alpha itself is, then really what you're going to do is you're going to end up iterating this function. Again, if, if you're only interested in G values. Essentially, we're using the G values as a label for ordinals, or a little more sophisticated way to say it is we've de we're defining an embedding of countable ordinals into the set of functions from natural numbers to themselves. And we're really just sort of seeing what psi of omega to the X does when expressed in that language.
Okay, so what does it do? Well, so we've got psi uh, composed with omega to the x, iterated n times, on what used to be an impressive ordinal for us, psi of 0 or epsilon naught, but isn't anymore. Um, so what happens? Well, the initial g value that you have, you, when you first apply this the first in the first iteration of this guy, um, when you first apply it, you're applying it with alpha is psi of 0. And so you take g of psi of 0 comma n. That's n double up n. Then you f omega that. And then, but then immediately you do this again, and you recycle that. And the g value goes up by another application of f omega, and another, and another. So all you're doing is you're iterating f omega n times on n double up n. You know, once you get to iterating f omegas, it doesn't matter too much whether you started with n or n double up n. Just to simplify, I'm just going to say that f, that's f omega iterated n times of n. And by definition, that is f omega plus 1 of n. So we've got to the f omega plus 1 level. And that's a big deal. Uh, f omega is really, really big, um, but we don't want to get stuck there and then think, oh, maybe it's going to be f omega of n squared or f omega of n cubed or even f omega of n double up n. The, the real power of this, the big omega here, is we've diagonalized, and now in that diagonalized slot, we get to start doing iteration again. Um, and we know that that's the power of how these functions grow. So it's really, we're starting to see how even the g values on these kinds of expressions start to systematically replicate f values, and we know that's going to be impressive. Um, f omega plus 1 of n is one of my favorite functions because that's one of those ones where even if you put in n equals 3 in here, it just is just fantastically huge because it's the f omega function applied to 3 and then do it tw two more times. So what's the Veblen uh, comparison real quick? Um, this, not too surprisingly, hopefully, I was talking about how um, when you put in a countable ordinal in this uh, this exponent slot, that puts that exact countable ordinal in the subscript slot of the Veblen function. Well, and I mentioned, hey, we haven't gotten to this idea of recycling that in that slot. Well, that's exactly what putting a big omega here does. It says, okay, iterate that. Do what we always like to do is when you find a new slot, iterate it. And that's going to say that that this actual ordinal, psi of omega to the omega, is exactly the limit of that process of start with phi zero of zero and then put it in the subscript, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We've talked about how that's called the pfefferman schutte ordinal. It has a nice role in proof theory and things like that. And that's gamma sub zero. So this is, in, if you care about the Veblen race, this is a good place to be that um, we've finally exhausted, we've gone past the single variable form of Veblen, like the phi alpha of beta version, where there's one subscript and one um, argument in parentheses. Um, there's still the multi-function and even infinite variable form of the, of the Veblen story available. So in the next video, we'll see, um, in a way you can probably guess, um, even if you haven't looked at the Wikipedia article, um, uh, you can probably guess about how we're going to get past those, but it's going to be very soon in this story. Um, but this is a good place to stop this video, and in the next one, we will take this as far as I think I'm going to go in this series.